And now we're going to set up for an animation. And I'm going to reset to the full color spectrum initially. Then click up here. Now for an animation, to do an animation, you just basically tell it which columns is it supposed to be looking in. So we can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the columns. So we're looking at 12 time points in this case. Now I'd like to e emphasize that just because it's an animation doesn't mean it has to be a time series. The animation tool provides a way to compare things with the color ranges set to the same way and so you can click back and forth between them which you'll understand once I show it to you in a moment. So in addition to looking at a time course you could for example do some comparative expression analyses say. You know say we're looking at peroxide exposure right now what if we wanted to compare that to the response to you know metal ion exposure or to the response to a detergent exposure. Then we could actually load those different responses into one data set run it as an animation and then flip back and forth between it. Okay, so we're going to look at all the data points here. So let's just click down. And we've set to the full color spectrum and to paying the data on an overview chart. And let's hit submit. Okay, now here we have our time course. You can see this running and refreshing uh, right here. Again, just going through the website. So this is a 12 time point data set. This is the peroxide exposure study. Now, let me show you a couple things. Well, obviously, this is playing through and repeating, looping up here. You can see the time points indicated here. And of course, it will say time point, but it doesn't have to be a time course. We just tend to assume that's what people are going to put in here. You have these sort of VCR, DVR style buttons here, so I can pause, I can play, and I can go backward and forward. Now this backward and forward feature is really nice because as I mentioned, this animation sets the color to be um, the same across the entire data set, and it lets you conveniently flip back and forth, so you can imagine that instead of looking at time points, I might be looking at, as I said, you know, maybe one is metal exposure and one is peroxide exposure. And I can look at one, flip over, look at the other, flip back, look at the one, etc. And in addition, you can see that we have the color scheme remaining stable here. The histogram will change over here, so you can actually see at which time points things are in different parts of the color range. So you can actually watch that grow and change. And you can flick over here and watch the whole display change and show different responses to what's going on. Okay, so you can watch, we'll let this get back to the beginning here. So, first time point, exposure starts, what happens over here? Oh, we see a lot of reactions being turned down as we go to the middle of the time course and then the regulatory effect goes away. Let's take a look here at central metabolism and see what's happening. Again, we're going to wait until this loops around the first time point. Of course, we could go through manually too, but it's fun to watch it go. Okay, starting out and you can see some reactions turning down and in general uh, turning down from glycolysis down through the TCA cycle. And over here you may have noticed a couple of things actually turning up in the middle of this entire time course. Actually toward the end of the time course, there we go. And so this lets you just run through the animation and you can actually save this animation as an HTML file and there's information on doing that. I mean, you can just let it run run through, you can click forward, you can click back, and you can do all the different kinds of color displays that I discussed in the individual data points. So I could turn this into a three color display, I could do any of those things. As a little warning, the more data points you're looking at, the longer the file is going to take to load. Okay, so that now we've looked at 
The same gene expression results set at single time points using the default colors, a single time point using color cutoffs, a single time point using a three color display, and now we've looked at an animation. And we've also shown you how you can make a chart of tables. So now let's go back to the query page. And we're going to do one more thing, and that's we're going to change up data files. So I've been mainly showing this off with the gene expression data set, and in most likelihood that's what you're going to be looking at, but it doesn't have to be. So let's pick a new data file. I have this one called coli density metabolites. This one is going to actually use absolute values, single data column. We're looking at compounds this time. And I have to clear out our old thing here. And just delete that up there. And we are looking at a time course, but it's just three data points. Now what this data set actually is, we'll use the full color spectrum. This data set is actually uh, a look at a handful, um, eight or nine, metabolites in E. coli and how their levels change as E. coli grows from low density to high density. And so these are metabolic changes looked at in a metabolomics kind of study at different growth stages in the organism. So let's hit submit. Okay, and here we go. So now we're looking at something with very few compounds on it. But you'll notice we're lighting up stuff all over the place. And that's, of course, because lots of metabolites show up in multiple pathways. So you can see metabolites appearing over here, where they're transported into and out of the cell, and over here. And you can also see I did absolute values here. And we have a reasonably wide range. So it sets our scale pretty high. And if I look at the histogram, you'll see that some of the things are kind of being blown out by the high end of the scale. So maybe next time we want to reformulate our data into log values and look at it that way. But what you can see, flick over here, is how certain values change across this time course. There we go. So you're not just stuck using gene expression data, you can use metabolomics data, proteomics data, even reaction fluxes if you can get those. There's a lot of stuff you can paint on this display and see it in its full cellular context. And you know, it can bring to light important things. You know, maybe that small molecule that you were really stuck on thinking about in one pathway is in three other pathways, and that's why it's being regulated the way it is. It's the kind of thing that you don't know unless you see it in the full cellular context. Okay, so in this webinar, we've shown you how to use the cellular omics viewer. We've shown you how to use it for a single data point, how to set color cutoffs, how to use a three color system, and we've shown you how to do an animation so you can do time courses or compare data uh, on normalized colors and flick back and forth easily between data sets. I've capped it off here by showing you that you're not stuck with gene expression data. You can do stuff like metabolomics data, proteomics data, reaction fluxes, pretty much anything that can stick a number to something in our display. So now let's go back to the Biosite query page. And take a look at some of the comparative tools that are available on Biosyc. So down here, comparative analysis. That's where we're going to come back for part three, where we look at doing comparative genomics and biopsych, including doing comparative analysis across organisms, comparing pathways, reactions, proteins, things like that, and how to get some interesting information out of a single organism. Then after that, we'll cap off this webinar series with part four, ortholog viewing. So I encourage you to come back for parts three and four to give you a full understanding of the kinds of comparative and omics tools that are available on the biopsych site.